it is mentioned in the Muslim Imam Ahmad that when the person enters his qabr, if he is a mu'min, his salah and his siyam surround him. And the angels, meaning of punishment, come. And the salah push them away. And they come from another side. And the siyam push it away. And the hadith then goes on. And as for the kafir, nothing can push the angels away. So the hadith goes on. It's a long hadith. What protects from Adab al Qabr? Salah and Siyam, but then we can extrapolate any good deed. Excellent point here. What protects from Adab al Qabr? Any good deed. It's explicit here. Salah and Siyam stand as protections. Now, Salah and Siyam are the, of the Arkan of Islam, and they include Quran and Dhikr and Dua and Sajda. All types of worship are included in here. So we can say one of the ways to protect from Adab al Qabr is to make sure we have lots of good deeds. This is one of the ways to protect from Adab al Qabr. Just like one of the ways to get into Adab al Qabr is every major sin. Again, it makes complete sense, complete complementary here, right? Of the ways to protect from Adab al Qabr, and this is really the ways that we should start practicing specifically memorizing and reciting frequently Surah al Mulk. Surah Al-Mulk should be on our agenda, brothers and sisters. Out of all the surahs in the Quran, we should make it a point to memorize some of them, even if we don't finish all the Quran. And by the way, by the way, all of us should have the niyyah to memorize the whole Quran. What's wrong with having the niyyah? Just put it in your heart. Try. What's wrong with that? I will give inshallah lectures about this, but I've known Hufad that became Hufad at the age of 65. And it's possible. One ayah a day, two ayah, they just put it in your heart. Anyway, whatever you memorize, and, and by the way, you should always try to memorize more. Why stop at the five, ten surahs you know? Why? I mean, what's stopping you? Just every day, just concentrate on one small surah, extra day. And one surah that should definitely be on the top of your list is Surah Al-Mulk. And it's only 30 verses, brothers and sisters. 30, that's all. There are so many ahadith that mention the blessings of Surah Mulk, of them. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in authentic hadith uh, in the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim, Surah Tabarak hi al-mani'atu min adhab al-qabr. It is explicitly linked. Surah Tabarak is the preventer from adhab al-qabr. End of story. What more incentive do you need, brothers and sisters? If you haven't memorized Surah Mulk, start memorizing it today. Surah Tabarak it is the surah that will prevent Adab al Qabr. And it's authentic hadith in a number of books, including Al Tabarani and Al Hakim. And also, we have in Sunan al Tirmidhi that there is one surah in the Quran that's only 30 verses. Our Prophet said, Thalathuna ayah. And it made shafa'a in front of Allah until Allah forgave him. It is Surah Tabarak al Ladi bi yadihi al Mulk. Very explicit. And it is in uh, Tirmidhi. And Ibn Mas'ud said, this is Ibn Mas'ud saying, Ibn Mas'ud said, a person will be brought to his qabr and two men will come to him. And when they come to him, it will be said or a voice will be heard, you have no way to get to this man. He would recite Surat Al-Mulk. Two angels will come, meaning, meaning the angels of punishment will come. And a voice will be said, it will be heard. A voice will say, meaning another voice, an angel will say, Laysa laka alayhi sabil. You have no way to get to this man. He's protected. Because, kana yaqumu yaqra'u bi surat al-mulk. He would stand and he would recite surat al-mulk. Then they will try to come from his chest and it will be said to him, go away. Come to his face, it will be said to him, go away. Come from his top, it will be said to him, go away. And Ibn Mas'ud said, فَهِيَ الْمَانِعَةُ تَمْنَعُ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ He said the same thing as the Prophet ﷺ, but he's explaining it longer. It is the mani'a. Mani'a means preventer. It will prevent from عذاب القبر. And so this is Ibn Mas'ud saying something, elaborating on Surah Tabarak or Surah Al-Mulk being a protection from عذاب القبر. So 
How does Surah Al-Tabarak prevent from Adab Al-Qabr? The one who frequently recites it, the one who memorizes it, the one who loves it, the one who uh, recites it in Salah. This is the one who, because this version says, Kana yaqumu, He would stand with Surah Al-Mulk in Salah. So not just reading it once or twice, but being frequent in its reading, being of those who are of, and it, it is also reported, even though some have said the hadith is, Allah knows best if it's weak or not, but one version says he, the Prophet ﷺ would recite Surah Mulk every single night. There is a narration like this as well. He would recite Surah Mulk every single night. But even if it's not every night, these traditions that mention protecting from Adab al-Qabr, they simply mention frequency of Mulk. So this means Surah Mulk should be on your regular list along with ikhlas and qul huwallahu ahad and falaq nas as surah mulk as well even if you split it over two three four rakat or something or you recite it every few days but it should be in your regular reading list surah mulk as well okay in sahih bukhari and sahih muslim it is narrated that sa'd ibn abi waqas would teach his children this dua the way that the teachers would teach kids alphabet the way that you say Alif Ba Ta Tha, he would teach his children this dua. What dua is this? That he said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us at after every single salah, we say this dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-jubni, wa a'udhu bika uradda ila arda lil-umur, wa a'udhu bika min fitna al-dunya, wa a'udhu bika min adhab al-qabr. He would teach his children this dua the way the teachers teach the alphabet to their kids. And he would say to his kids, the Prophet ﷺ taught us to say this after every single salah. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from cowardice. I seek refuge in you from living to a senile old age. We don't want to live to an old age where we are no longer capable of taking care of ourselves. You know, that's not something that it is not, you know, I mean, if it happens, it's not necessarily, yani, you know, a curse for the person or bad for the person. Person, it's a trial for those around him. But let's be honest here. Do we want to be in that situation? No. And our Prophet ﷺ passed away at a beautiful age of 63. An age where he had all of his senses and he's powerful, still strong, still yani, relatively all the quwa is there. So he would seek refuge in Allah. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from living to a senile old age. When again, you are not no longer coherent. You don't want to live that long. So number two. Number three. A'udhu bika min fitnati dunya All of the trials of the dunya And number four A'udhu bika min adhab al-qabr When would our Prophet say this dua? Guys, when would he say this? After every single salah And this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim Abu Bakr narrates that And this is in An-Nisa'i That the Prophet would say After every single salah Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kufri Wal-faqri wa adhab al-qabri after every salah, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from kufr and from extreme poverty. I don't want to be extremely poor. And from adhab al-qabr. Zayd bin Arqam, narrated in Sahih Muslim, said that I am only teaching you like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasli wal-jubni wal-bukhli wal-harami wa adhab al-qabr. Again, after every salah, adab al-qabr. I seek refuge in you from being lazy and uh, from being incapable and from being cowardly and from being stingy and from living to an old age and from adab al-qabr. Again, Sahih Muslim and Aisha and Sahih Bukhari said, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always seek refuge in Allah with this dua again after every salah. So we have, I just quoted you five sahaba, five, and I wanted to do this on purpose to demonstrate five different Sahaba are telling us after every single Salah, our Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge from Adab al-Qabr. Aisha says that he would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitnat al-Nar, wa min adhab al-Nar, wa min fitnat al-Qabr, wa min adhab al-Qabr. After every Salah, he would make dua seeking refuge from Adab al-Qabr. Now you tell me, the one who seeks refuge from Adab al-Qabr five times a day for 50 years of his life, Will Allah not accept even one dua once and that's it, gone? Think about that. So brothers and sisters, from now on, after every salah, add this dua. Add this dua. Allahumma ni'udhu bika. And you can use any of them. Min al-kufri, wal-faqri, wal-ajzi, wal-bakhri, wa min adhab al-qabr, wa min fitnat al-qabr. Make it your habit. 
Don't just rush after salah. Remember, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, of the best times of dua is after salah finishes. Why? Because the lazy people want to rush out and go back. That's when the righteous sit down and they do their adhkar. That's what the angels, when the famous hadith said, what are the angels fighting over? What are the angels fighting? That What is the best deed? Adhkar ba'da salawat. Sitting down after the salawat and just doing your dhikr. When everybody wants to rush away, say the salam and khalas before you know it, have the audience is out. Okay, it's halal, no problem. But this is where the darajat are raised up. This is where the race is won. The salah is over. You don't have to sit. Just sit for a while and do subhanallah, 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 alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika. And then you say these du'as. There's multiple du'as. Ayat al-Kursi as well. That should also be done. Remember our Prophet said, whoever recites Ayat al-Kursi after every single salah, the only thing that is between him and Jannah is his own death. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, 30 seconds. How can you not invest 30 seconds for Jannah? Come on, how lazy can we be? 30 seconds, 40 seconds reciting Ayat al-Kursi after every single salah. The only thing between you and Jannah is your own death. Why can't you do that? Don't be lazy. Aim for Jannah by these small things. So add all of these, make it your habit. This is the difference between the mu'min, the muhsin and the, the average Muslim. This is the difference. This is where it all goes. These small things. Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, inshallah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.